Good morning, greetings, friends. Welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of biology, what is in the world of the body, just standard operating procedure because the human body, the human biological system, It's a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. Our phone number today on the Bright Side, our phone number every day on the Bright Side is 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 if you want to get off your meds or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program. If you know someone dealing with a skin health issue, acne, psoriasis, eczema, we can help you. We've been talking about skin health here for a couple of months now. We'll continue talking about it. Everybody wants to have beautiful skin. Billions of dollars are spent on skincare products. And for the most part, for the most part, skincare products don't do much, don't work, don't do anything. In fact, for a lot of times they cause more harm than good. A typical moisturizer suppresses moisture factors. A typical sunscreen suppresses the natural sun protection factors that are already in the skin. Our misunderstandings of the skin are, are, are all over the culture. And you have to look no further than your television or listen to your radio or, or, or see a print ad about a skincare product to really get a sense of how, how lost we are when it comes to how we take care of the skin. So if you've got skincare issues, eczema, acne, rosacea, dry skin, we can help you today, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have any health issue, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please head over to my blogs, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products directly off the website, or you can head over to brightsideben.com and order longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up for a one-time $25 fee. You can join my team, the Brightside Ben team, and help uh, spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also make, make a few bucks. Some folks are making a lot of money selling longevity products. You can sign up right off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Okay. Last we spoke, we were talking about cosmetics and the skin. Cosmetics, uh, cosmetics comes from the Greek word to adorn, and this is how we look at cosmetics. We look at it as adornment or decoration from the skin. This goes way, way back to the days of uh, ancient Sumeria, even before cave people used to use ochre and various dyes, iron oxide dyes, to, uh, to adorn their skin, to decorate their skin. Even today, we think that using skincare is, uh, is decoration. My message is that the skin is not just a canvas for adornment. It is a part of the body. It's a fully fledged organ of the body. It's affected by what we put on the skin. The body is affected by what we put on the skin. And in turn, the skin is affected by what's inside the body. It goes back. It's a circle. What we put in the body affects the skin. What we put on the skin affects the body for better or worse. Vitamin D is made in the skin. And vitamin D has a tremendously, tremendously important role to play in health and the health of the immune system and the health of the digestive system. It's anti-cancer. There's so many 
there's so many different roles that vitamin D plays in the body. And almost every day we learn more about the importance of, of vitamin D, which indeed is not even a vitamin. It's a hormone. It's a fundamental chemical in the body, and it's made in the skin. And don't let anybody tell you. Dermatologists love saying, oh, you don't need to get the sun because you can get your vitamin D in a supplement or in food. Well, let me tell you something. These are dermatologists and doctors who say these things. They don't understand chemistry. It is a known fact in biochemistry that the vitamin D that's made in the skin in response to the sun is a superior form to vitamin D than anything you can get in a supplement. Not only that, but the vitamin D that's made in the skin protects us from the sun. The sun protects us from the sun. This is how the body works. You don't need any sunscreens or sunblocks. You don't need them, flat out, unless you're baking, unless you're laying out, unless you're uh, a construction worker or you're playing golf or tennis and you're in the sun for hours and hours. You don't need the stuff and let nobody tell you that they're not toxic. They are. How toxic is the only question and that's up for debate, but the fact of the matter is they are toxic chemicals, period. Poison chemicals, period. I'm talking sunscreens now, not necessarily sunblocks, although you never know. Now, there's two different sunblocks, as we've said many times, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And theoretically, anyway, zinc oxide is not toxic. Theoretically, anyway, titanium dioxide is probably not toxic. Although the things they put in with the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, the slip agents, the silicons, the things that coat the zinc oxide molecule, we don't know about that. The fact is, though, your sunscreen chemicals are highly electrical substances. That's how they work. They're electrical dampening enter, uh, entities. They, they dull the energy of the sun. They trap the energy of the sun. They screen the energy of the sun. And they are big, big, big time problematic molecules. You wouldn't want to drink your sunscreen. I'm talking the actual chemical. It's not nice stuff, and any healthcare professional who's sworn to take a, who, who is sworn to do no harm should be ashamed of themselves for telling you to slather on a sunscreen. Yes, I said that, and you can quote me on that. All right. The skin is part of the brain, by the way. It's a satellite of the brain. It, it probes into the environment and reports back to the brain. It's filled with neurotransmitters. That alone tells you why you don't want to, be, why you don't want to slather anything on top of your skin. Yeah, sunscreen's toxic, and you don't want to slather that on the skin, but you don't really want to slather anything on the skin that's not a vitamin, or that's not a nutrient, or that's not something that's familiar to the skin, thus the importance of retinol and vitamin C. They're in the skin already. That's why my Truth Treatment products feature vitamin C and vitamin A, retinol. Go to truthtreatments.com if you want to learn more about that. The skin makes its own vitamins. You're going to suppress those if you use a moisturizer, or use a sunscreen, or use a topical product that is wax and oil. The skin makes its own antibiotics. The skin makes its own moisture factors. One of the most important of the health-promoting substances that's in the skin is high aluronic acid. This stuff is absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, there's a lot of amazing molecules in the body, but it's hard to come up with one that's more amazing than high aluronic acid, which is electrical, as we've been saying. It's piezoelectrical, which means as it's pressed or as it's compressed, it generates an electrical charge. How cool is that? You got the stuff in the skin that when it's squeezed or compressed generates electricity and that electricity is critically important for accurate and controlled growth of cells. Hyaluronic acid helps heal the skin. There's lots of products that you can get over the counter. You can get in uh, department stores or salons or in skincare stores where you buy skincare products, I should say, that have hyaluronic acid in them. But you're not going to get the benefits, the chemistry benefits of hyaluronic acid by putting it on top of your skin. That's because of that barrier. That barrier on the surface, the so-called stratum corneum barrier, that thing is really important, obviously. Our whole body, in a way, is, is held together by this thin fingernail-like uh, layer. It's basically like a liquid fingernail that coats the surface of the skin and holds the whole body inside of it. How cool is that? You got a paper, maybe it's about as thin as a piece of notebook paper, maybe less, and that thin notebook paper size or thickness layer of fingernail-like material called the stratum corneum holds everything in place inside the rest of the body. However, if you're going to get the benefits of topical skincare, you've got to bypass that stratum corneum fingernail-like barrier. And hyaluronic acid can't do that. It's too big a molecule. So you're not going to get the benefits of HA 
hyaluronic acid topically, but there are things you can do to upregulate or stimulate your own hyaluronic acid. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Welcome back, folks. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific Time and 10 to 11 Central Time, five days, uh, seven, Monday through Friday, five days a week. You can get all the programs up at brightsideben.com, brightsideben.com. Got four and a half years of archives, skin care, skin health archives, bone health archives, immune system health uh, archives, and as well as nutritional supplements. Lots of good information about the longevity supplements, too. If you have a customer, client, or potential client, you want to refer them to the program, you can uh, head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com, and you can also search at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. If you've got questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we're talking skin health today, and we've been talking about it for a while. We'll continue to talk about it. Hyaluronic acid, I absolutely love this stuff. Hyaluronic acid is important for the health of the skin. It's important for the health of the bone. It's important for the health of 30 to 40% of the body called connective tissue. The body is held together. All the organs are held together by this stuff, connective tissue. Many diseases and certainly lots of the symptoms of aging, wrinkles and weak bones and generalized skeletal structure weakness and shriveling up, the shriveling up that's associated with aging is really connective tissue problem. And hyaluronic acid is stupendously important for helping build and strengthen connective tissues. Lots of ways you can upregulate the activity of hyaluronic acid. One thing that you can't do, cannot do to uh, get the hyaluronic acid benefits inside your body is put it on top of your skin. That's because the surface of the skin is a barrier and a, uh, protects the inside, the lower levels from, from the outside environment. And that means stuff you put on the skin for the most part isn't going to get anywhere underneath. And that includes hyaluronic acid. No problem. You can make your own hyaluronic acid. You can upregulate your own hyaluronic acid. And there's two main strategies for doing this. There's two main ways that you can upregulate or increase hyaluronic acid inside your body, and we should all be doing these. Now, first of all, hyaluronic acid is a skincare substance, a skin health substance. It's found in the skin. It helps secure or bind moisture, bind, moist, uh, bind water in the skin. It creates plumpness and fullness, so much so that dermatologists will actually inject hyaluronic acid underneath a product called Restylane is an injectable form of hyaluronic acid, and you can go to a plastic surgeon or dermatologist and have Restylane injections. There's a few of these hyaluronic acid injections that you can get. They, they work temporarily, although some people get reactions from them. For the most part, they're not toxic, but they're just kind of faking things out. They're faking you out. They're faking your, faking your friends out. At the end of the day, they're not faking your body out because you're still breaking down even if you have hyaluronic acid injections. This is the problem with our cosmetic way of treating the, the skin. Skin is an organ of the body, and just because you stick something inside the skin to make it look like you don't have wrinkles or you put on some chemical or inject some chemical into the skin that fakes out the nervous system or the skin nervous system to create a sense of tightness, that's called Botox. That doesn't mean you're not healthy, or that doesn't mean you're healthy. If you really want health, you got to upregulate or stimulate your own hyaluronic acid, and there's lots of ways to do it. In terms of the skin, you can exercise your skin. Yes, I said that. Exercise your skin. How do you exercise your skin? I'm not talking about the muscles. I'm actually talking about the skin, the skin cells, not the muscles, but the cells. I'm not talking about facial exercises, as important as those can be, by the way. I'm talking about stimulating the skin, which is a very interesting and misunderstood concept. And as with uh, the nearly universal misunderstanding or non-understanding of hyaluronic acid, there's a lot of misunderstanding and non-understanding around stimulating the skin, what I'm calling exercising your skin. If you want healthy, beautiful skin, you got to stimulate it, exercise it. And there are a lot of folks who say, no, no, you got to be gentle with your skin. No, you don't want to do anything harsh on your skin. Well, maybe that's true to a certain extent, but... If you want to exercise your body, if you want to exercise the, the internal part of the body, likewise, you got to exercise your skin. I'm talking skin cells here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to increase the movement of skin cells, the dynamic nature 
of skin cells. As we get older, skin cells, be, like the rest of the body, becomes less dynamic. This is one of the reasons why we get older. Our body becomes less dynamic, our muscles become less dynamic, growth becomes less dynamic, and things start to slow down. That's called aging, and ultimately that's called death. The dynamic nature, the movement nature, the growth nature of skin cells increases the production of everything that's made in those skin cells. Skin cells make moisture factors. So increasing the dynamic nature or speeding up the dynamic nature of skin cells means more moisture factors. It means more peptides. It means more hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is made in skin cells by stimulating those skin cells. By increasing the dynamic nature of the skin cells, you get more hyaluronic acid, your own natural hyaluronic acid. This is what we should be looking for. You also get more moisture factors and more growth hormones and more healing molecules. And you know what else? Your skin cells make their own sunscreen. Tell that to your next boneheaded doctor or dermatologist who tells you to slather on a sunscreen. Say, doc, did you know that my keratinocytes, that's the fancy way of skin, saying skin cells, make their own sunscreens and sun protection factors? Shouldn't I be figuring out how to stimulate my cells to make their own sun protection factors? Shouldn't I be doing that, doctor? Oh, well, by the way, doctor, isn't it true that the wax and the oil and the sunscreen ingredients and uh, all the stuff I'm smearing on my skin and my SPF 60, isn't it true they're suppressing my own natural sun protection, doctor? Do I really want to do that, doctor? Ask your doc the next time if he understands that your skin cells make their own sun protection factors. Ask him if he understands that the way to protect ourselves from the sun is to stimulate our own natural health. And what's one of the best ways to stimulate your skin cells' own production of sunscreen, sun protection factors? Exercise your skin cells. Exercising, stimulating, improving the movement of the dynamic nature, the, the growth the, uh, of skin cells and their chemical products, like hyaluronic acid, is technically called upregulation. And there's a couple of wonderful, wonderful skin uh, exercise strategies that you can use to upregulate the good stuff, probably the most important way to exercise the skin, to upregulate all the good stuff, like moisture factors, anti-wrinkle fibers like collagen and hyaluronic acid, is to leverage something called exfoliation. Now, most people, women at least, have heard of exfoliation. It basically means to remove skin cells off of the surface. The movement of cells from the bottom of the skin to the top of the skin is called turnover time, or turnover. And the time it takes is called turnover time. As a cell is moving upwards from the bottom to the top, it's gradually changing shape. You gotta picture your skin as layers. You know, we look at the skin, we see the surface layer, but there's multiple layers underneath, and cells are growing upwards towards the top. And as they're growing upwards towards the top, they're secreting uh, health chemicals, growth hormones, and hyaluronic acid. And the faster these cells move upwards from the bottom to the top, the more hyaluronic acid and moisture factors and sun protection factors and vitamins and all the other nutrients and, and, and wonderful, beautiful health-providing substances that they make are going to be secreted. That means we want to be stimulating the movement. That's called exfoliation. Exfoliation is technically to remove skin cells, but as we remove skin cells, we stimulate the movement of cells upwards. That's why I call it like exercising. It turns things on, just like exercise turns on the, the, the growth of muscle cells. Exfoliating or exercising the skin turns on the growth and the movement of skin cells. And it's so critical, impor critically important to understand if we're going to keep our skin healthy. There's lots of ways to exfoliate. There's chemical exfoliation, there's mechanical exfoliation. You can use a laser to exfoliate or doctors can use lasers to exfoliate. But the best way, the all-time greatest way to exfoliate is by applying substance, something on the skin. We'll tell you about it when we come back from our... On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. If you're enjoying our uh, conversations on skin health, you might want to check out my Facebook page, my Facebook blog, The Truth with Ben. I blog regularly on various subjects about skin care. Uh, we're talking a lot about the sun, given that it's summertime. And uh, you can just head over and like, uh, like my Facebook page, I guess. You say like my Facebook page. It sounds kind of weird, but... Click the like button at The Truth With Ben. And that's my skincare Facebook page. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and my new blog, 
that I'm doing with George Norrie, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase Longevity products right off the website, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Help me in my mission to educate the world about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can sign up right off the websites, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, hang tight. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to say a couple more quickie things here. Uh, if you want to upregulate or stimulate or improve hyaluronic acid functioning and production of hyaluronic acid, you may want to consider using the Fucoid Z or the uh, the... Uh, Fucoidin products, the Fucoid Z or the Z radical products from Longevity. Algaes, brown algaes do make hyaluronic acid and hyaluronic acid like substances. So uh, by eating your Fucoid Z, by using your Fucoid Z or your Z radical, you can support hyaluronic acid health. Also, when it comes to exercising the skin, stimulating the skin, to produce its own hyaluronic acid. You want to think about exfoliation. You want to think about skin exercise. And one of the all-time great ways to stimulate the skin and upregulate the production, not just of hyaluronic acid, but of moisture factors and of antimicrobial peptides and sun protection factors and all the good stuff is to use alpha hydroxy acids, especially glycolic acid. Love, love, love glycolic acid. Reading from the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery. This is an article, a classic article actually. It was published in 2001. Glycolic acid treatment increases type 1 collagen, that's your anti-wrinkle fiber, and hyaluronic acid content of human skin. This is a paper that was published, a classic paper actually published 15 years ago, but there's lots of good papers and articles that talk about upregulating all the good stuff in the skin using exfoliation techniques. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, how you can use alpha hydroxy acids, which are naturally occurring so-called fruit acids. They're found everywhere in nature. We'll talk about how you can use those to upregulate HA, and we'll continue talking about some of the really cool benefits of hyaluronic acid. If you're dealing with osteoporosis, by the way, hyaluronic acid supplements can be a great way to upregulate the strength of bone, to increase the strength of bone. Hyaluronic acid is a bone health supplement. This is uh, from the Journal of uh, Agricultural Food Chemistry, January of 2013. Oral administration of HA reduces bone turnover. Quote, results show that oral supplements of hyaluronic acid significantly reduce bone turnover associated with osteopenia, which is a weakness of the bones. Anyway, we'll continue talking about alpha-hydroxy acids and hyaluronic acid and skin health tomorrow and in the coming days on the bright side. Okay, time to hit our phones, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Dwayne in Texas. What's up, Dwayne? Welcome to the bright side, my friend. Thanks for taking my call. What's going on, brother? Well, I got a daughter. She's 33. She's uh, 120 pounds. She's pregnant with her third baby, and she, they're telling her she's got a hyperthyroid. Okay. And they want to Don't give her let them. Do they want to? What do they want to do? Drug her? Take out her thyroid? What are they going? No, they, they just want to give her some drugs. First, yeah, they, they give. And, go ahead. And yeah, you know, that's it. And I did, you know, I just don't want her to take the drug. I don't blame you, especially when she's pregnant. What kind of medical professional would give somebody a poison, which is what a drug is, when they're making a baby? So now the baby gets drugged too. Great, congratulations, exactly. brilliant, brilliant, our brilliant medical model here. Hyperthyroidism is plain and simple, <clears throat> an autoimmune issue, mostly anyway, an autoimmune issue. It's called Graves' disease. Did they mention that to you, Graves' disease? Yeah, yeah okay. that's it. Okay, that's it. Uh, hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease, these are all autoimmune problems. In other words, they're immune problems. We can call them autoimmune, meaning the immune system is turning on itself. In the case of hyperthyroidism, it's turning on the thyroid, but the point is it's immunity. The one word that you think, want to think about when you hear the word immunity is defense. And in the interests of taking care of the problem, the one word you want to think of when you think of defense is offense. What is offending the body? So you got hyperthyroidism, that means immunity. You got immunity, that means defense. And if you want to take care of a defensive reaction, you got to figure out what's offending the body. Does that make sense so far? Sure. Okay, so when we say offending the body, we mean offending the blood. This is what we're really talking about. We're not talking about offending the tissue. We're talking about offending the blood. Immune responses are always blood responses. Something is getting into the blood. Now, the blood is kept protected. It's a compartment, and it's kept protected from everything. 
It needs to be pristine. It needs to be pure. The blood is the life. That's what it tells us in Leviticus. It tells us this in Genesis. The blood is the life of the body. So the body is, keeps the blood pure and clean. There's only three ways things get into the blood to initiate an immune response. The first way is through the skin. Now, this can happen if you have a burn or if you're an IV drug user. Has she had a burn or is she an IV drug user, Dwayne? No. No, it's okay. got to be diet so, or uh, okay. like cigarette. You see me working here. You see me working, okay? Okay, you probably listened to the program before because we say this all the time, right? So you either breathe things into the blood, you either inject things into the blood, or you eat things into the blood. If you're not injecting things or you don't have a burn and you're not working in a nuclear power plant or a coal mine, you're probably not breathing your uh, 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 offending agents. You're probably eating them. Dwayne, she has an eating issue. And you can tell she has an eating issue by her digestive problems. If she's hyperthyroid, guaranteed she's got some diarrhea or loose stools. So what you want to do is you want to start doing a food diary. And this is a must. She's doing this for two people now, Dwayne, not just for herself. It's, it's bad enough if you're doing it for yourself. It's important enough if you're doing it for yourself. But now she's got an innocent life form that's developing inside of her that is going to be punished by her bad decisions. That means it's critical for both her and her baby that she does a food diary and starts to link her digestive systems to food and then eliminate those foods. Next thing you're going to want to do is start to support the digestive system, support digestive health. So food elimination is always the first thing. The next thing is support the digestive system, the health of the digestive system. And that means, number one, the bioluminal nightly essence, not an option, must have, three in the morning, three at night. Ultimate enzymes after all her meals, uh, or with all her meals, and then apple cider vinegar, and then uh, she may want to throw in some of the Z radical or the Fucoid Z is a little bit better for the digestive system. The glucogel too, by the way, can help support digestive system health. Then slowing the body or calming the body down is also going to be important. Uh, Food elimination will help in that regard, but also keeping her intake of fast-burning sugars down is also going to be critical. Uh, That means bread and pasta and sweets and desserts. After she eats those kinds of foods, she wants to drink copious, generous amounts of water to dilute her blood sugar. And then you also use the sweeties, the chromium vanadium, in addition to the healthy start pack, which will also help her stabilize her sugar. And then last but most certainly not least, deep breathing oxygenation is critical. Now, I heard you say something about cigarette smoking. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go into that. You, you know, obviously, and she probably knows as well, that isn't helping her or her baby at all. And for a, for a doctor to poison her body, to poison this child's body, your, your kid's body, without working on the cigarette uh, the aspect of cigarette smokes, it, it's crazy. And on top of now, she's got to deal with tobacco and nicotine and all the other stuff that's in cigarettes. Now she's got to deal with a drug. So one of the reasons why we smoke is because we're trying to get oxygen. We're trying to breathe. Of course, it's counterproductive because you end up breathing toxins. But slow, deep breathing can go a long way towards helping her wean herself off of her cigarettes and also slowing her thyroid down. Hang on, Dwayne. Don't go away. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. We're talking to Dwayne about his daughter. Congratulations, by the way, Dwayne. You're a grandpa, huh? Three times? Is this your third Three time? Three times, pretty soon. Congratu- yeah. That's awesome. You sound like a young guy, though. That's awesome. Uh, let's take care of your daughter, though. Hyperthyroidism. If you go to the doctor, they're going to drug your thyroid. They give you what's called antithyroid medicine. What does that mean, antithyroid medicine? It means you're poisoning your thyroid. Uh, the tapazole or PTU, at least they're not going to radiate it. That's another medical strategy is to, to shoot radiation at the thyroid or to yank it out entirely. And I'm telling you, nothing breaks my heart more than to see somebody without a thyroid because they were hyperthyroid and their medical professional couldn't figure it out. So here's what you do. You calm the body down. Something's offending the body. The defenses are up. The body's freaked out. Now, pregnancy will freak the body out anyway, and, and pregnancy is a, a serious burden on the body. So she's already loading up her body, and now it's her third pregnancy, so she's got to calm the body down. It's a calming, the solution is a calming solution. The food strategies are going to calm the body down. The blood sugar strategies are going to calm the body down, and perhaps the most important way to calm the body down is to breathe. Practice slow, deep breathing. Now, she's smoking cigarettes, and that ironically is going to, even though she's probably, a lot of times we smoke because we're trying to, to activate our breathing mechanisms. Ironically, what that ends up doing is shutting down uh, or, or suppressing oxygenation of cells, making matters worse. It could very well be, Dwayne, 
that the smoking is causing the hyperthyroidism. I'm not saying that for sure, but it could, it's certainly involved in some level. So practicing her slow, deep breathing is extremely important. If she's, if she's trying to get off of cigarettes and can't, have her start using some B vitamins, especially niacin. That can be helpful. Niacin is chemically similar to uh, nicotine, and sometimes people can use niacin or nicotinic acid or niacinamide uh, to help wean themselves off of cigarettes. Uh, also, if you want to use some calming nutritional supplements, GABA, G-A-B-A, maybe 1,000 milligrams at bedtime. Lithium orotate can have a calming effect on the body. Uh, maybe 5 to 10 milligrams of elemental lithium in lithium orotate. And then also, uh, do that at bedtime. Also, 5-HTP uh, can also have a calming effect. And tryptophan also has a calming effect on the body. The amino acid glycine, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E, can also have a calming effect on the body. So lots of wonderful, non-medical, non-doctor, non-toxic strategies that will not only not tox out her body, but will actually deliver her good health, which is her birthright. I hope we helped you out, Dwayne. i got to move on. Is there anything else you want to add? That's good. Thank you. Okay. God bless you, my friend. Okay, Mary in Michigan, what's up? I'm sorry to keep, uh, we, we Hi, keep losing no, you here. That was very interesting. Um, uh, I called yesterday and tried the two days before, and you told me to call back today. Okay. Uh, I got some of my questions answered by Dr. Group this morning on Joyce Riley's show. Good deal. But Dr. Have, Group's great, by the way. Oh, he is, yes. Um, uh, I'm trying to heal my gut. And okay. uh, I've been listening to you for quite some time. I'm trying to follow all of your advice Okay. Um, with the bone, bro bone, bone soup and, and all of that. Okay. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not finding any. You're not getting the benefit. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. First of all, take that word. Don't ever say that word. Try. It's not okay. a good word. Hate that no. word. Try. You either do or you don't. Remember that oh, from okay. Star Wars. Do or don't. You don't try. Okay. You're either doing or you're not doing. You're not trying. So you're not doing, in yeah. your case. So here's the deal. Bone soup's wonderful. Absolutely, stupendously important for the gut, for the immune system, for the skin, for overall health, for protein. It's just super important. But it's not like it's magic. So if you're not getting the response, if, you, if you're still, your gut is still bothering you, the first thing you've got to do is eliminate food. Now, if you've been working at this a long time and you still can't find any, you're not getting the relief you want or the results you want, you've got to fast. You've got to do a food. Did you fast did, for three days? I, I, did the, I did it for five days. Okay, then what happened when you started eating again? Well, it all started up again. Well, yeah. <laughs> so you can't have a digestive problem unless you're digesting. So what you want to do is you want to figure out what specific foods were causing the problem. And if you're eating regularly when you start your fast again, you're not going to know. I mean, you'll know that something's causing you a problem, but you're not going to know what it is. So when you start your fast again, you want to start off eating just one type of food. And it helps if that food doesn't have a lot of working parts, doesn't have a lot of components to it. So you just start off eating bread, or you just start off eating bananas, or you just start off eating eggs all day long, just eggs, all day three long. Things just I don't, uh, three things I can't eat. I already know a whole lot of what I can't eat. It doesn't eat. matter what you don't eat. It okay. doesn't matter what you're doing right. It matters what you're doing wrong. Right. You follow me, Mary? Yeah. What you've eliminated, that doesn't matter if you still have the problem. What matters is, is what you haven't eliminated. Okay. So you could eliminate the gluten, that's great. You could eliminate the eggs and whatever, that's great, but you still have a problem. Yeah. So if you have a digestive problem, and that means uh, anything along the digestive tube from your mouth to the other end, yeah. that means something is getting in. I'm a thousand miles away from you, Mary. I can't tell you what that is, but you're an intelligent woman, all right? You can figure it out. Right. What are you putting in your mouth that's causing the problem? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I just figure it's because it hasn't had enough time to heal. That it, it could be, but it, and I can't tell you the answer to that, but it could also right. be that you're, you're still doing the stuff. So if I were you, or if you were my mom or my girlfriend or my sister, huh? what I would tell you is do your fast again. Yeah. And this time, when you start your fast again, start by eating just one type of food, and you can start off with your favorite food and eat it all day and see what happens. And then if you're okay with that, the next day, eat your next favorite food. Eat it all day and see what happens. You keep doing this until you figure it out. Now, there's a couple of nutritional strategies that you can use to help calm down the digestive system. Continue on the bone soup. That's absolutely wonderful. You might want to throw in the glucogel caps. I take those, yeah. Okay, good deal. Apple cider vinegar after all of your Do meals. That, yeah. Good deal. <laughs> Digestive enzymes after all uh, your meals. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a Vitamix? 
No, I don't. I want to well, get one of those neutrals. Go get a Vitamix, and if you don't want to, you know, they're expensive, but they're worth it, right. in my right. opinion. Uh, if you don't want to spend that much money, get a Nutribullet. The reason I'm saying right. get a Vitamix or a Nutribullet is because they keep the fiber, and the fiber is extremely important for the digestive system. The fiber is what the bacteria feed on in right. order to get it healthy and grow. So you can take right. your probiotics, but if you don't have enough fiber or food, so-called prebiotics, for the probiotics, the probiotics aren't going to be able to do their work. So make sure you're doing lots of fiber with your vegetable juice. Celery juice and cabbage juice are particularly good for the digestive tract. So subsist as best as you can on celery juice and on um, cabbage juice. And by the way, celery juice, cabbage juice, beet juice, vegetable juices are tremendously satisfying and filling, especially when they're in a bl- when, when you eat them, uh, drink them fresh right out of the blender. As your as the uh, the food or the the vegetables are spinning around in the water in your blender, they're generating an electrical charge, and you're drinking an electrical drink when you drink these things, these kinds of uh, uh, vegetable juices, and they're tremendously satisfying satisfying as well as being very important for the digestive system. So between your veggies and your juices, your food diary, your probiotics, and increased uh, and your increased fiber, uh, you can do a lot of things for your digestive system. A couple other oh. miscellaneous, let me just give you a couple mo- other miscellaneous nutrients okay. for the digestive tract. Something called zinc carnosine can be very helpful. Zinc carnosine, bile acids, you have to get that at the health food store. Uh, bile acids, also something called HCL drops, which you have to get from a, a pharmacist or a prescription. Drops, and drops instead of the pills? Yes, HCL drops are more effective than pills, but you do need a prescription for those. Okay. Uh, so you have to get your doctor to write a prescription. And then uh, there's one other thing that I was going to tell you, and I forgot what that was. I'll have to ha- that'll have to come to me. Go ahead. What were you going to ask? Uh, how about L-glutathione? Superb. Glutamine, okay. that's the one I was going to tell you about. Uh, glutamine. Glutathione, not so much because it's hard for that to get into the blood through the digestive system, but glutamine is extremely important for the health of the digestive tract. Glutamine is fuel. It's gasoline, if you will, for okay. the cells of the digestive tract. Uh, okay. I'd be doing about half a teaspoonful of glutamine every day. And gelatin can also help you, by the way. Uh, yeah, gelatin capsules. Yeah. Good deal. Good now. deal. Can you yes. spell Fucoid and Z? Because I yes. can't find it. Sure, no problem. F is in Frank, U is in Uncle, C is in Cat, O is in Oscar, I is in Igloo, D is in David, A is in Apple, N as in Nancy, and uh, Fucoidin, and then the letter Z. And then last thing I want to tell you, I'm going to let you go because I want to get a couple more calls in. Mm-hmm. Uh, last thing I want to tell you is slow, deep breathing before your meals or with your meals can also help with the digestive process. Oxygen oh. and digestion go hand in hand. If you're okay. eating fast food or you're in the car or you're uh, under stress, it's going to be difficult to digest. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm not. In the, I'm, I'm just at work. That's about the only problem. But uh. okay. Well, the, get to the archives. Go to Ben Fuchs. Or go to BenFuchsArchives.com or BrightsideBen.com and review everything we just talked about. And I'm going to let you okay. go, Mary. Thanks so much for your call. Bless you. Thank God you. God bless much. you. God bless you as well. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Robert in Ohio. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Got to go quick, Robert. I only got about a minute. Hi, hi Ben. My father-in-law recently had a stroke. He's been put on cholesterol medication, blood thinner medication, yeah. and uh, blood pressure medication. Sure. And they're telling him not to take the Mighty 90. Oh, great. So we'll poison the body. Now that it's had a stroke, we're going to poison him. They're trying to kill him. I, I can't, I mean, I don't know if that's a fact, but it seems that way. They tell him not to take his vitamins, but take the poison. Robert, this is so egregious and so nasty and so mean-spirited. Can you get your doctor on to, so we can talk to him personally tomorrow on the air? I would love uh, to do I that. Can... I'm being facetious because he'll never do it. But I would love to. I don't like talking behind people's backs. I want to tell the. I want to ask the doctor what the heck is going through his brain when he does this. Okay, I'm not going to get mad here. I'm sorry, Robert. Robert, can you call back tomorrow? Because this is a very important subject. If you can call uh, back, yes. we're, we're just out of time. I apologize. Thank you. I, thank you so much. God bless you. I, I don't like getting mad, and I hate talking behind people's backs. But it's just so mean spirited. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Take care. We'll talk to you all tomorrow. Have a beautiful, blessed, holy day. Bye for now.